Good evening, Agile Acquisition Enthusiasts, and welcome back to the, wait a minute, I'm not in the underground digital tiki bar. They actually drug me out of my basement all the way across the country to California, and I'm here with one of the original founders of the Procurementati, Aaron Pava, who is also the co-founder of Civic Actions. Uh, but hey, it's Agile Acquisitions and Alcohol, so cheers. Cheers. So this is really exciting for me because this is the first official guest on Agile Acquisitions and Alcohol and I'm really glad to have you because you're a friend of mine and you also have an amazing company. And I thought this would be a great opportunity for you to tell some of my viewers like what makes Civic Actions, Civic Actions. Okay, cool, awesome. Well first, it's awesome to be on your, on your show and I've watched pretty much every video. I've liked, I think, every yes. video. Yes. Okay, so I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah, so, uh, so Civic Action. So Civic Actions provides open and agile digital services for government. And uh, in, the, in the big picture, what we're really looking to do is what are the avenues and ways that we can transform government. And so that looks like a lot of different ways. It looks like training, it looks like software delivery, it looks like open data, it looks like procurement reform. You know, so we look at a lot of different avenues and what are these levers, what are the ways that we can actually make a difference, move the ball, and um, make better governance or citizens. So, so here's what I think is interesting about your company. Like a lot of times companies are really focused on like how can we sell mm -hmm. and, and hopefully we're selling a good thing. And what like really inspires me about Civic Actions is like Civic Actions is like how can we do good things and there may be something to sell afterwards. So that's definitely not like sort of at the forefront of your business model. Yeah. And like I wonder if you can help explain, because I think this is like inspiring, especially as we talk about like the transition to adoption of open source and, and how we can talk about like there's still a business model for industry to success. Like you have a company, like this is working. Like what is going through your company's ethos that makes this like a viable business model for you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, yeah, so we've been around for 14 years, and so it is a viable business. <laughs> um, the, and part of the DNA of the company has always been free and open source software. And so free and open source software, and part of that is you're always standing on the shoulder of the giants that came before you. Like most of the code that we build, you know, we're adapting on top of that and providing value. And part of the obligation is that we want to contribute that back to the community and then others can get the value of that as well. So we used to do that traditionally with nonprofits and then five or six years ago we made a, a shift to really focus on government services. And it actually really aligns well with government services because there's lots of companies that provide uh, provides software to the government. The government buys that software or more appropriately, the, the citizens pay their taxes and that money goes to buy software to go back to the citizens. And so the citizens should own that software. Other governments, you know, other states, other jurisdictions should own that software. So that's really part of the, the DNA. But I think to the heart of what you're asking, which is kind of like, what, how do we operate? How does the, um, like what do we value if it's not just about making a lot of money? Like what is the focus? And I think it's really three primary areas. You know, so the first one to me is that we really do have this mission, you know, the mission that I was sharing earlier. What does government transformation look like and how can we play a part of that? And, and that's an evolving conversation. The, the second part, which I'm really passionate about, and part of the responsibility that I have with the company, which is how do we create an extraordinary culture on a team? Like I really think a lot about building community, building team, what makes people tick, like what, how do you create that like thank God it's Monday kind of experience for people and that they get a lot of fulfillment in their work. And then the, the third aspect is really how can you help people in their professional development? So someone comes in, they come to the door, and, you know, we start the onboarding process on day one and they have a certain level of skills, they have a certain level of experience, and they're gonna be with the company for two years or four years, or if you're lucky, they're gonna be there for 10 years. No one's a lifer. You never think that someone's gonna be a lifer in this kind of industry, but how can you support 
people, you know, and these people end up becoming your friends and, you know, like really close relationships or close with kids and, you know, like we, we care about each other. How can you forward people's careers and help them in their professional development? So, um, you know, my, my wife works in sustainability and they talk about the triple bottom line and, you know, like it's not just about the, the bottom line. For me, the triple bottom line actually has, to, you know, part of that includes, um, you know, it's kind of like, and more lines than that, right? Like, like what it is expressed, like how do you create that culture and how do you forward people's careers? And if you focus on that kind of stuff, you build reputation, people want to bring in people they care about, people that can really deliver value, people that are aligned with the mission, and then you have this self-perpetuating loop where you're growing a business organically through passion and through care and through um, accelerating people's careers. Awesome, okay, so this is Agile Acquisitions and Alcohol. We've got the alcohol. Uh, you know, last 30 seconds here, like give me your thoughts on how this transformation that you're helping to bring to the federal government and Agile Acquisition play together. Like Agile procurement, Agile development, like what are the things that come to mind when you hear those words? Yeah, so, so I mean, where it relates for me is in transformation, you know, so, or, so um, there's all these levers by which we can move government, right? And one of them is, like, how do you make more user-centered products, right? Like, get stuff in the hands of users early. Um, how do you have, uh, like, build software more iteratively, like, you know, that's the ad we those. But at the core of it, um, you have, there are certain parts of, of uh, building software and government that are these, I want to say gates, right? Like how solicitation is delivered, whether it's a statement of objectives or, or like a long list of requirements. There's the people that are essentially that serve in a PO capacity. So often that's the federal government, that can be a core, right? Like a contracting officer representative. Um, and then you have the whole aspect of um, the vendor community, right? And you have large companies, you have small companies, but to, to work in the, in, the, in the government as a software company, and there's often like a lot of barriers to entry, right? Like, so it's hard to get a prime contract or understand the, the legal leads or to compete with the, the large companies. So there's all these different avenues and I think so as it relates to agile acquisition I think that you know a lot of what you're working on on the procurement side you care about um, it, it's the uh, the whole procurement audience it's like how do we create the contracts that support this I see that uh, and that's one avenue but we also need to train people inside government about around all these practices and we also need to lower the barrier of entry Right, and and there's a lot more areas that we can like you know smooth out the process, right? So, but if we focus on all these areas, I think that we create a new system, and hopefully that can provide a transformation that we're looking for. All right. Well, I mean, Aaron and I can talk about this all night long, and we've done that before, but I don't know if you guys want to watch the whole evening here. So, uh, you know. I'm, I'm excited to have Aaron here because he's a friend of mine and he's got an amazing company that's doing really great things and so I'm glad I was able to share that with you. Um, and so this is you know, yet another episode that I hope is adding value. If you're liking them, remember, give me these thumbs up, give me comments, let me know what you want to talk about. Most importantly, please keep innovating because that's what it's all about. And Aaron, hey, cheers, buddy. Cheers. Take care.